Welcome everyone to the first and only sports gambling game show in the world. Now I'm your host, Sean stacking the money green. And here on let it ride, we take two problem gamblers, or as we call them contestants and have them square off to see who's the wiser wise guy and decide who gets to return next week to defend his, or in very rare occasions, her title. Basically it's like the UFC, but for people who hate exercise and want to avoid getting COVID, this is our very first championship edition. Both contestants are undefeated. Our first champ. You know him from crushing golf gambling podcast host Steve Shermer. In last week's episode, he made Steve look uglier than Charles Barkley's golf swing. Give it up for SGPN's own sorcerer of the spreadsheets, Moonoff Manji. Moonoff, give us some advanced uh, stats on what it feels like to be a Let It Ride champion. One and oh ATS, baby. Let's let it ride. <laughs> you covered the spread. Uh, a lot of people thought you wouldn't be able to pull it off. And now, now you're going to be, uh, we're going to introduce him in just a little bit, but you're going to be going head to head with a Buffalo Bills fan. This is a rematch of the playoffs last year. Nothing, uh, nothing fishy from that playoff game last year, right? As a Texans fan. All. Houdini with Deshaun Watson, baby. <laughs> oh my God. I'm still, I'm still bitter about that bills money line. All right. It's time to welcome our next D gens champion. Three weeks ago, he stuffed former let it ride champ, Ryan, real money. Kramer. So deep into a locker campus security is still looking for him. Give it up for SGP ends own Farrah Fawcett, a fantasy football, Adam Pelletier. Adam, you also uh, your day job, high school English teacher. Your French last name a little tough to pronounce. Do you ever let your students call you Mr. P? Uh, that's exclusively what I go by, Mr. P, <laughs> P Dog, P Diddy, Peter, P P, P D P, Peter Griffin, P D P. I've been called it. Name it, I've been called it. But let's just go back, Moonoff. I want you to know, no hard feelings about that playoff loss, but there's no ref here to save you. With bullshit calls like a blindside block <laughs> and a phantom touchback, okay? That was none of that's happening. That was that yeah. was pretty brutal, and I and I know I'm supposed to be impartial, but I did have a decent uh, chunk of money on the bill, so that may be uh, maybe tainting <laughs> things in Adam's favor. All right, just a quick review of how the game works in round one. I test their sports gambling knowledge with trivia questions. In round two, we look at how many units each each contestant won on last week's game. And in the final round, they'll give us their best bets for the weekend. Whoever has more units on Monday morning wins and returns next week to battle out our next challenger in. All right, round one. Each of these questions will be worth 10 units each. We flipped a coin before the game, and you're in luck, Mr. P. You won the coin toss, and you're going first. The category is Back to the Futures. Again, NBA right of uh, right, just coming right uh, up on us again. Just feels like we just wrapped up the season. Which NBA team was the farthest under their projected win total for the 2019 2020 season? So the team that had did the worst compared to their win total was it the A Atlanta Hawks, P Charlotte Hornets, C New York Knicks, D Golden State Warriors. You're on the clock, Mr. P. It was D, Golden State Warriors. You are correct. The Golden State Warriors preseason win total 47 and a half. Everyone got injured. Uh, you know, since then, they've gotten injured again. Uh, I don't know if uh, Clay Thompson's ever going to play basketball again, but Golden State only won 13 games, missing the over by an amazing 35 games. All right, Moon off. You're on the clock now. The category is spread up. After the Broncos lost all their quarterbacks last week, the Swain, the Saints swung from a six point favorite to a seventeen and a half point favorite. However, that's not the biggest point spread this season. Which team has been the biggest favorite this season? Is it the Kansas City Chiefs, the Pittsburgh Steelers, Seattle Seahawks, or the Green Bay Packers? Hmm. Biggest favorite so far this season, Kansas City Chiefs, Pittsburgh Steelers, Seattle Seahawks, or the Green Bay Packers. I'm gonna go with I think it was the Pittsburgh Steelers. 
Oh, uh, moon off. All you got to do is remember who played the Jets. That's right. The Chiefs were favored by 20 and a half points in week Ooh. eight over the Jets, making it the ninth highest point spread in modern football history. So if you're uh, keeping score at home, Kendall Hinton gets more respect than Sam Darnold. Not a great look for the New York Jets. All right, going back to Adam. Adam, your next category fantasy freaks. Last week, the Buccaneers, Tyreek Hill. Oh, against the Buccaneers, Tyreek Hill scored 44.9 fantasy points in standard scoring. Who was the last Kansas City Chief to score more than that in a single game? Was it A, Tony Gonzalez, B, Priest Holmes, C, Jamal Charles, or D, Alex Smith? Tony Gonzalez, Priest Holmes, Jamal Charles, or Alex Smith? Who scored more fantasy points than Tyreek Hill? It was Jamal Charles. You are correct. It was all the way back in 2013, December 15th. The Chiefs dominated the Oakland Raiders 56 to 31. He only rushed for 20 yards and one touchdown, but he had 195 yards receiving and four touchdown catches. Wow. 51 and a half fantasy football points. Uh oh, what do we got here? Bonus question Adam, are you ready to? Hell yeah. We're putting it all down. <laughs> all right. Josh so Allen, Josh Allen is going out for the wheel route touchdown right now. It's all on the line. Uh, Josh Allen. Oh, Cole Beasley coming off a, a touchdown throw. That's uh, that's pretty impressive. All right. Now 20 uh, points here for the bonus question. And this uh, gets a little personal here. Mr. P you're a proud graduate of the college at Brockport home of the division three golden Eagles football team. Now Rocco uh, Puccelli Salomone is not the name of a Sopranos character. Again, probably Ryan's probably uh, screaming over here with my Italian pronunciation, but he is your football team's longest tenured head coach. Name the team he coached for after leaving Brockport. Rocco Puccella Salomone. <laughs> One of us. Did he? I think he went up to the Colts, didn't he? I don't know. Is that a question or an answer? Uh, Let's roll with it. I think he coached the Colts as a line coach for a bit. Ah. Incorrect. He went on to coach over at Susquehanna University Riverhawks, which uh, University Riverhawks sounds like a future XFL team, so stay tuned. Uh, I, I like the Riverhawks in the over this year, or as soon as the XFL decides to get their shit together and actually play 2022. football. Twenty twenty two. Twenty twenty two. They're they're still pushing it back. All right, Moon off. Your final category. Back to the futures. Which World Series champion or champions were a seventy five to one long shot before the season started? Was it the A two thousand one Arizona Diamondbacks? B 2016 Chicago Cubs, C 2003 Florida Marlins, or D 2019 Washington Nationals. Mm. Diamondbacks in 2001, Cubs in 2016, Marlins 2003, the Nats and Natitude 2019. Who? Of these teams were a 75 to one long shot before winning it all. I'm going to go with uh, the Nationals, Washington Nationals. Incorrect. It was the 2003 Florida Marlins, 75 to one uh, underdogs beating the New York Yankees in the World Series. Pretty, uh, pretty fucking weird. And of course, if it's weird, it's coming from Florida. So congrats to the 2003 Marlins. Bonus question time. Munaf, are you ready to? Let's do it. All right. There you go. 20 points on the line here. After winning the Super Bowl three, Super Bachelor, uh, Susie Colbert probably disagrees with that term, but Super Bachelor Joe Namath invested in an establishment called Bachelor Three. That's right. It quickly became a notorious hangout for bookies and made men. 
Uh, maybe, uh, maybe Adams, a former football coach, due to that reputation, the NFL commissioner forced Namath to sell it. What type of establishment was Bachelor Three? Was it a nightclub, sports bar, gentlemen's club, or Turkish bathhouse? <laughs> Bachelor Three, formerly owned by Joe Namath, was it a nightclub, sports bar, gentlemen's club, or Turkish bathhouse? I'll go with uh, gentlemen's club. Oh my God! Jeez. So uh, so close yet so far. Namath uh, he he retired rather than sell his club. Wow, that is a true DJ's only. But then I guess he ended up changing his mind, decided to get rid of it, and return to the NFL. Bachelor three though, man, that actually sounds like a uh, bachelor. I'm in. I'm I'm interested in hanging out at. Uh, all right, round one. Let's take a look at the scores. Adam, you have 20 points, aka units. Moon off, unfortunately, <laughs> sitting on zero units. All right, now let's see how you did this past weekend. Adam, give me your lock dog and tease from last week. Uh, my tease was. The Broncos at 23 and a half, the Eagles at 12 and a half, and the Dolphins at minus a half, one and a half. Then we had the Panthers over the Vikings on the dog. And then my lock got the assist <laughs> from Anthony Lynn oh, God. at the end of the game. Bills minus five. Going against Thank you, Anthony. Going Lynn. against Thank my you. lock, rubbing it in my face. All right. So you had 20 <laughs> units on your lock. You had 15 units on the dog, 15 units on the teaser. Tease you uh, came in with the uh, Eagles, but the Broncos. Oh man, uh, you couldn't cover a twenty-three and a half point tease. <laughs> that is that is twenty twenty in a nutshell. All right, so with your uh, doing a little unit math, you have thirty-eight units to add to your winnings from round one, bringing you to a total of fifty-eight units. Yes, had to do the math there, and that checks out. All right, Moon off. Give me your lock, dog, and tease from last week. The lock was the Vikings minus the three. The dog was the uh, New York Jets. Uh, sorry, yeah, the New York uh, Jets. Over I told golf. I told you in Slack that Fitz Magic was starting. I tried to warn you there. You know, the only thing was, I thought I looked at the schedule. I thought this was the only possible game that the Jets could win all season, but that didn't come through either. <laughs> and the tease. Uh, I had the Giants uh, at pick. Uh, I think believe the Titans up to nine, and then the Rams minus a half. But looks like we had an over week. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is horrific. This is supposed to be the champion edition, and uh, it's a, it's a red it, let it ride first here. None of your picks won, um, so you're gonna have a lot to choose from as far as defending your shittiest picks. Adam <laughs> dominating right now, fifty eight to zero. Running it up, there is no uh, there is no mercy rule on let it ride. But now it is time to defend your shittiest pick. Whoever gets uh, gives the most convincing excuse on why it wasn't your fault. Your pick shit the bed. You win ten units. You only have fifteen seconds to do it. Adam, you're up. You had the Broncos in your teaser. Fifteen seconds. Defend your shitty pick because they called up. Kendall Hayton instead of just running wildcat <laughs> with Royce Freeman and Jerry Judy all fucking game, which is what I thought was going to happen. I was like, oh, those are NFL caliber athletes who are going to make stuff happen. They're going to make some guys miss and Taysom Hill's going to throw interceptions, which spoiler he did. So if they don't call up Kendall Hayton, who I've seen quarterbacks play better and I've seen some bad, I've seen some high school quarterbacks play better. I've seen some bad high school games before. Okay. All right, you make some compelling uh, points there, and of course, always uh, you always enjoy making fun of Taysom Hill on this podcast, which you were able to do there. Taysom <laughs> Hill still not one career touchdown pass. All right, kicking it over to Moonoff. Moonoff, you know where we're going here. Defend wow. this. Defend this <laughs> Jets money line pick. Listen, like I said, I thought I looked at the schedule and I didn't think that this was the only game that the Jets had on their schedule. Division game. Uh, they were an underdog by a full touchdown. I thought this was their opportunity to get that one win, Adam Gates against his former team. But even then, they couldn't even score a touchdown, and they got blown out by 17. So <laughs> Jets are gonna Jets, and 
Trevor Lawrence. Good luck, buddy. All right. Uh, I'm going to go to the judges here and uh, we're going to, we're going to toss you guys. seems like you both need a little help. We'll both give you 10 points. So Adam, you're up to 68 points moon off. You're sitting at 10 points. And now we move on to round three, where you give out your picks or in moon off's case, probably just one pick uh, for the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Adam, you're in the lead, so you go first. You have 68 units to spend using the lines over at mybookie.ag. What are you gonna pick here for the weekend? So first, we're gonna go with a teaser. All right, we're gonna go with the Dolphins minus five and a half, the Texans plus three and a half, and then the Jags. Where are they? The Jags plus ten, and I got 68. So you're teasing uh, the gonna, Jags up to 16 then? Yeah, I'm gonna tease the Jags up to 16. <laughs> what could go wrong? All nothing. Right. How Absolutely many, nothing. And, and how many units are you using there? Uh, we're gonna put 20 units on that. Okay, 48 units left. Uh, we're gonna put 20 units on the cards money line at, as a dog. Okay, I like that. And then. You know where I'm going with the lock. It's the most boring <laughs> lock of the week. But Kramer's over there disrespecting the greatest quarterback in the history of the NFL, the greatest franchise, the rock in the all white snowstorm unis this weekend. Ooh. Bills lock it in at minus one. No 28 money. units there. I am going to run this <laughs> up on Moon Up. I'm going to run them, <laughs> run him into the ground like the Bills should have done in the second half last year. No, Until the refs decided to play. It's hard when you're playing 17 <laughs> out of 11. I was drunk last year, but I wasn't that drunk that I forgot. And this was uh, I'm, I'm learning so much. Apparently there's six refs on a game. Uh, I did that math there. 11 plus six, 17. All right. So moon off Teach English <laughs> moon off. You have a, you have a huge mountain to overcome, or you can just say, I, I think Adam's picks are so bad. He's going to completely miss, and I will win by retaining my ten units. Kind of a soft way out. I I think now again I uh, I'm the impartial host, but maybe put together a couple money line dog parlay, couple tees, may, maybe just like a four team, maybe five team parlay with your ten units. But again, it is your choice. What are you gonna do here to get back in this game? Maybe just a plus three hundred money line dog and hope Adam doesn't get all his picks right, loses some of his units. Yeah, I think I think I will go with a three team money line dog parlay. I love it. Let's go. I'm throwing my page out the window. Let's take the Bengals on the money line. Let's take the Falcons on the money line. And let's take the Let's take the Texans on the money line to throw a little three team uh, dog parlay there. Okay. Yeah. That's going to pay out a uh, pretty big, probably 10 to 12 to one. We will, or even higher than that. So uh, stay tuned and uh, make sure to come back next week. That'll do it for <laughs> make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. So you never miss an episode and also head over to sports gambling podcast.com NFL college football, college basketball. Adam's got you covered with fantasy moon offs covered. You got you covered with stats, ref stats. We do it all over at sports gambling podcast.com. See you next week.